friends to Connected, your bilingual space. I hope you had a great week and you're ready to enjoy your weekend. I remind you that I'm talking to you all the way from Santa Cruz, Bolivia in South America. I am here today with a new guest and a new topic. Remind you that you don't only see us through the Abiyala channel, but also through Facebook, Twitter and on YouTube. talk to a very fond topic for me. We are going to talk about yoga. Since I am a practitioner myself, it is special to me to talk about it because all of the benefits that yoga, yoga brings to our lives. And I, see, I say this not because I see it on Instagram or because I had one or two classes, but it's because I had the experience to see the impact on myself. And everything happens through practice. Also, it's good to know that yoga is not only the postures are more known as asanas that you see everywhere. A lot of people say to me, oh no, I can do it, I'm not flexible. Yoga is not about you being flexible or your body being flexible or you being able to touch your, your, your feet. That's not, the ta that's not what it is. Actually, yoga is an integrative uh, practice that uh, brings you techniques in order to breathe better, to have a better movement, to ha have a better understanding with yourself, and also to listen to your body. It actually gives you the tool so you can be able to do that for yourself. So today's guest, it's a very special guest because she doesn't only do yoga for herself and for others, but she has kind of uh, merge her practice of yoga to yoga for cancer survivors and cancer patients. So today we're gonna hear about this. How can you develop a relationship with your body even being ill in this, in a, in this measure? So don't go anywhere, we'll be right back with Johan Lotkien, which is in Arizona, USA. When we come back, we'll have four questions for her and she'll explain to us and tell us how can we actually develop a yoga relationship with patients and cancer survivors. We'll be right back. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back, connected people. Thank you for remaining connected. For the people that are just landing to the show, I want to tell you that today we are talking about yoga as a tool for uh, cancer survivors and also people that are currently with, a, with this terrible disease. Um, in order to meet Johan Lutkin, who is the one that is going to tell us all about it, I am going to read a little bit about of her background. Johan Lokien originally is from Mexico. She is a certified in yoga for survivors and cancer exercise specialist. She is the founder of Yoga Construction and Healing for Cancer Survivors. Johanna has trained in the Hatha, Ashtanga and Iyengar traditions. While living in London, she studied yoga for stress management at the Sivananda Yoga Vendata Center. She continued to immerse herself in studying with world-renowned teachers like Richard Freeman, Tim Miller, David Swanson, Tim Feldon, and Kino McGregor. She has the privilege and honor to have received Jukai by Roshi Johan Halifax. She has taught her survivorship series and mindful movements for cancer patients on treatments at the ICU to ease secondary effects of chemotherapy and radiation in hospitals as part of the integrative medicine team. It is my pleasure to introduce Johan Lakien. Welcome to Connected. First of all, I must say that all of your preparation is very impressive. You have seen several deep, deep, different fountains of knowledge and 
the fact that you do it only do you do it for service is a beautiful thing that just already before we start the, the interview, I want to thank you for the work that you do. Johan, no, let's go ahead you. with the first question. Tell me, how did you incline to work with cancer patients and survivors? I, uh, I think that everything started for me in London. I was living there and, uh, and I myself was going through very difficult times, not only emotionally and in my personal life, but I was struggling with my body. I was born uh, with a lot of orthopedic issues. And, uh, and that's how, you know, I started practicing yoga. But in London, I realized that there was a different way uh, yoga was taught. And that was yoga for multiple uh, you know, illnesses, uh, limited mobility, depression, uh, scoliosis, and then, um, you know, uh, while studying there, I realized that the yoga was part of the health system of the UK. So, you know, some midwives actually attend trainings for pranayama because they use the yogi techniques for breathing to ease, you know, the during the hours, you know, for uh, the, the partum, etc. And for me, that was very, you know, uh, you know, realizing that there was more than the asana that we were doing in the Ashtanga room, but, you know, you basically need to have a very healthy body uh, because sometimes in the yoga room, in the Ashtanga or Mysore practice, we have teachers very limited to actually give you modifications if you're facing any, uh, you know, biomechanical, within the musculoskeletal system in your body. So I started studying there and that's why I find out uh, while living in London that Richard Freeman in his uh, studio in Boulder, in his little shala, he was hosting with Mary Taylor, uh, his wife, a program, Yoga for Survivors, uh, who is the director is Laura Cooperman in Boulder, and um, and that got me thinking: uh, How can you know uh, yoga, uh, these you know thousands of year tradition? Uh, what were the benefits in a therapeutic setting? How you know to deal with something that it can maybe be considered at some point a terminal ill? And I just couldn't understand that. So you know, I, I, I just you know, it was the seed that it was planted. And I keep studying and doing my own practice, of course, but I, you know, then I went and started studying stress management with Ashwananda lineage. And then, you know, a younger, one of the main schools outside of India, outside of Pune, it's in Maidabel, one of the great centers for a younger, uh, you know, uh, in UK. And I started studying with certain younger, you know, teachers there. And I started realizing that they knew how to, you know, uh, offer me modifications for some of the orthopedic issues that I was facing and that I wasn't given, you know, doing certain other practices of yoga. So that's how it started it for me. Um, so once I came back to the US after living for three years in London, I had to Boulder, Colorado, and I immersed myself in a full one month retreat training to certify myself in the Yoga for Survival program. So that's how I came with contact, yoga and cancer as a way to find out and it was you know not because and that's something that I, I really want to make sure that everybody gets it I'm not a cancer survivor so for me it came as a way to explore the ways how yoga in a therapeutic setting can help with certain issues and not only you know biomechanical musculoskeletal your joints or you know something going on but how it can actually help with the organs, with, you know, uh, a cancer, not only cancer, but, you know, Crohn's disease, uh, cyst, uh, fibroids, uh, anything. I mean, cancer just happened that it just happened to me. I didn't look for it. Um, I wasn't searching for anything like that. And I think that at some point, things for me just happened. It just, uh, that's the way it was for me. I see. 
And then when you, um, basically when we see the relationship that people have with yoga, especially now here in the Occident, that every, every time is more and more uh, popular, right? Um, there is a, this relationship that you develop with your practice. So I wonder, how can people transform their relationship with cancer through yoga? Is this, is this a possible thing to do? Uh, I think so. So once I was studying and understanding how actually yoga, and I'm gonna say yoga. You know, I don't want to. I don't want to mention a, a certain school, but I believe that in the in the old times and in the way that in India it's taught. You know, yoga is part of the medical system. In India, you go and there are hospitals, and so maybe there's not a physical therapist. You actually have someone with a PhD, a master degree and you will have you know yoga within you know a clinical environment and so i start understanding you know how yoga certain asanas but not only the physical part but all the limbs of yoga how they integrate within you know your asana practice and how certain not only the pose but the whole sequence can actually help uh, to relieve and cope with secondary effects because when we actually practice yoga in a clinical environment like in a cancer center what we are trying to do is support the patient with secondary effects and that secondary effects can be uh, nausea can be um, uh, swelling can be you know lack of sleep can be uh, lack of mobility can be uh, to support the lymphatic system to change you know the relationship with pain and i think that that's something that you as a yoga practitioner can relate once you start practicing you know you start coming this inward journey you know because then we start noticing like oh my god there's some stiffness here but in cancer you know we are start building back this relationship with the body uh helping it you know directly to do some healing and i'm not talking about curing we don't approach yoga and not in the way that I've been taught to cure anything. You know, a healing can happen just by you being relaxed. And in the way that it works is once you, and I'm gonna talk only about the clinical environment because one thing it is in the way that we work with integrated medicine teams inside a hospital or a cancer center, and it's a different way in the way that we work outside, you know, a clinical environment. So inside a hospital, because, you know, we are regulated by so many things, and it's something, you know, that has just been new in certain hospitals, but it's already implemented in Mayo Clinic, in Hopkins, you know, hospital, MD Anderson, Texas, and here also, you know, in Phoenix. Uh, we need to, of course, abide to central protocols. And the way that we teach, of course, is group classes. So in a group class, we attain only to move certain parts of the body that will enhance, you know, circulation, that will enhance um your blood flow you know which it is um you know for the lymphatic system to move we do some breathing techniques because we really want that relaxation response so when people you know go into treatment or are in treatment just by relaxing more the body the body can respond better to whatever you know treatment they're going into or the medications and uh, that's what usually we will target at that point because you know there's several stages one is a stage when you just got the news and maybe you want to seek you know like some contemplative form like yoga but within yoga i'm not talking only about the asana which is the the poses and the physical part i'm talking about yoga right. as a whole as a whole like meditation as a whole as a little bit of pranayama you know you know, meditation and breathing techniques as a way of living and, you know, integrative medicine works in that way where you can actually, you know, integrate with your uh, radiation or chemotherapy, the yoga part, the relaxation techniques, the acupuncture, uh, nutrition, and we all work in as a team because we believe that it has to be this connection back again within the, body, the mind, body and spirit. You run the remedial yoga program at the Banner MD Anderson Cancer Center in Phoenix, correct? So how does that consist? I think that uh, not only for this cancer center, but before I was working at the Sylvester Cancer Center for the University of Miami, it's pretty consistent, uh, you know, how integrative medicine works. And, uh, you know, yoga in a hospital setting, again, uh, you are referred, first of all, 
Uh, this is not a walk-in class. This is not the just go in and it's not like that. Uh, you have to be referred by your surgeon or oncologist that it's, you know, it's time for you to start moving because, you know, all your surgeries are healed, your platelets, you know, your count is good. And so you're able to engage. And we have that clearance, first of all, and we are referred and then you will go to first to, you know, certain doctors and get, you know, recommendations and then you will sign up and then you will show up in my class. So in the classes is just in hospitals, um, we have chairs, it's not a beautiful yoga studio, uh, but it's amazing that people will show up, you know, in a situation like that. So usually a conference room uh -huh. will be empty and we will have chairs and, you know, some of the classes will be a uh, chair based. That's mean no one is on the floor and that has to do with many things. It has to do with the immune system, it has to do with people right. having balancing issues. So for some people, you know, they're also you know, all these issues with the knees or maybe some surgery, maybe age, and so many factors in place that for some people it's just not attainable to go and lay on a mat. Second, because some treatments like chemotherapy or radiation in, um, you know, breast cancer patients, of course, you know, uh, can actually uh, put in a very difficult situation all your bones. Uh, they can develop certain type of um, osteoarthritis which makes the bone speech so weak that even for them like you know laying down on the floor it can put them at risk to actually fracture a rib or you know for someone who just doing you know some small twists like this for someone if you don't understand you know where they are at their treatment that can cause uh, you know fracture in your spine so that's why we need right. to know and be referred yes. so in order to have a deeper understanding about this um the impact of yoga on these circumstances can you please share one story with us uh, okay i cannot you know i i'm gonna give better general guidelines about you okay. know about breast cancer in this case, just because you know you're a woman, I'm a woman. I think that it's a more recurrent, you know, type of cancer um, because it I cannot explain, problem. you know, information because of yeah, you know. Um, but I will say that um, that the real change, and that's not coming from what I'm, what I've been observing, but because of what I listen between survivors, the big change start for the healing to happen not because you i'm not saying that you know doing exercise or yoga or anything else is that good but the changes start when you actually accept you accept the current situation you accept you know what just happened and from there you can start seeing changes and that's what survivors talk to each other how it's more manageable and so the relationship with whatever you're facing in this present moment in your life by accepting that situation, then that relationship that you have with that situation, call it a, a cancer diagnosis, it starts changing. It becomes more space and there's some, you know, resiliency and compassion towards yourself because once you start accepting right. that it just happened, this is happening, then you come into a space where you're more humble and that's the people that you get in integrated medicine now by accepting we're not talking about giving up you know we're just it's just not about that it's just about you know you accept it and that's when you start engaging in things that are going to help right. you to cope that are going to help you to fight and so in the way that we work once you know people start accepting that they become more open to the whole situation and experience and they have never tried yoga before they just say like well i don't know but you know what i'm gonna try it it's here at the hospital my oncologist said that it works and it could work so that openness that's when things start happening i think so that's when changes start happening that's when you come into a yoga room and you start experiencing that maybe by the time that you left you're more calm you're more right. maybe your arm in a few weeks maybe it wasn't it was here and then maybe we get here and maybe go here maybe from here you reach your arm here but more than that is the state of your mind 
maybe exactly. your mind, your thoughts are not so consumed in the illness itself, but you can actually feel. And this is the important thing with pain, how we transform because it's, you know, pain will be there. I, I cannot change pain. Exactly. Pain is there because you're getting a surgery or they remove an organ or, you know, or you went to double mastectomy. So you're, you know, you're losing body parts. That's the reality. Right. And there's going to be right. pain. But what we work is a transformation with your suffering. That's the important right. part. Johanna, we're going to go really fast to a cut and we'll be right back with the last question for you. Uh, people at home, don't leave anywhere. Uh, wait for us, we'll be right back. Stay connected. Welcome back and we are almost at the end of the show, but we're not going to finish this interview without doing the last question to Johan. Johan, all the information you gave us today, it's revealing really, because most of the time when we have this uh, kind of illness that are so severe and so uh, difficult to deal with, you know, sometimes people just think that there's nothing else to do, let's just wait, but there is. And I think that the work that you do is exactly that. Um, my next question would be for the people that are just uh, listening about this, for this type of information. So if I would like to, um, whether I have the illness or somebody in my family or somebody I know, if they would like to do yoga, uh, is there any special place they should go? Can they go to any studio? How does that work? Yes, I think that um, even here in the U.S., we we have so many qualified people, you know, so it's easier here in the U.S. because you can check, you know, certifications and there's, you know, the Yoga Therapy Alliance where, you know, you can find teachers for, you know, specializing in yeah, like every single thing that you want to find and get some help and here with the cancer centers for integrative medicine, then it's easy. But let's say that we're in Mexico or anywhere in Latin America, I think that's where it becomes tricky. But uh, one thing that I will actually recommend, it's like, um, first of all, you're going to start and, you know, first of all, check with your surgeon and your oncologist so you can engage now in activity. Uh, that's the first uh -huh. thing. And the second one, once you have that clearance that, yes, you can move, you're going to start, you know, doing exercises or mindful exercises. Uh, I think that you need to check in these studios, first of all, how many years that person has been teaching and if they, you know, have the knowledge for in therapeutics. Um, I'm not going to say that you go to certain schools because that's not, uh, that I don't want to get into that. I think that all the schools of yoga have a background in therapeutics, although they're certain more immersed in the therapeutics. Uh, but uh, let's say that you just want to do some yoga, just make sure that you go and find out what the certification that the teacher certified, that at least that teacher yeah. has at least three years of you know practicing and at least another five of teaching, and that you engage first in something gentle and that you are, you know, just, you can trust that, you know, they know what you're going through, what are the limitations in your body, and they can actually support you on that. Otherwise, you know, yoga is more than the pose. You can go and engage in meditation, you can go and engage in breathing techniques, and I don't see that that's, um, you know, you can go and do that everywhere. And maybe if yoga as a postural asana practice, you know, the physical part of the, of the, of the yoga is just not where you live, I think that there's groups, you know, that again can offer like uh, breathing techniques of meditation and that's part of yoga too. So I will do that and I think that that will bring a lot of benefit too. Right. Johan, well, we are at the end of the interview. I want to thank you so much for this, uh, for this information because really um, it's something that everybody should know and everybody should have in mind. I'm gonna leave you a little time so you can say hello to every to all the audience and also if you'd like to share your web page, please. Thank you, yes, sure. So just make sure um, that in your country there's cancer centers already with something that is called integrative medicine. And it's a great tool. Okay. There's yoga research now. So everything that we do here in the cancer centers and in hospitals is richer research base. So there's always ways for you to prove what I'm teaching and talking is, you know, is based on research. There's a government, you know, support from the US and they're working with universities in India and doing all this investigation to prove 
how these techniques and you know uh, do actually work to cope with certain secondary effects. So first of all, it's a research based what we do. And second, my uh, web page, of course, if you have any questions, I speak Spanish, hablo español. <laughs> it's triple W, and it's my full name, johanlautien.com, and I'm always there to answer questions. I'm on Facebook, of course. Uh, there's a web page too under the same name. And uh, you can shoot me a message, and I will do my best to guide you and try to help you with, uh, you know, give you some guidance or uh, any resources maybe in your area uh, that you want to uh, explore. Johan, I have all your information on the display and on the screen. And uh, thank you so much for the time you took okay. to share with us all of this. And always be well, please. Mwah. Until next time. Thank you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. So after speaking with Johan and everything she told us, I have to say that I can conclude saying that nowadays we definitely have the tools and we have the people that are, you know, uh, putting together all the knowledge in order for make us have a more integrative uh, approach to different situations, like in this case, this illness, cancer. It's true that we have to find a, a medical treatment, that you have to do chemotherapy, that there are all different things to do, but there is also uh, this other part that we also have to, be, have to care. And it will definitely help us or help the people that are in this disadvantage to have a better experience through life. Whether you are ill or not, that is the, the most impact and most strength of yoga because it helps you be more on the present and be more on yourself whether you are healthy or not so the fact that nowadays we have all of these people that are getting uh putting getting all of the knowledge gathering going to different cities going to different countries in order to study with people that know from the roots it is definitely something that we should be thankful for and always as i remind you use the powerful tool that you have on the top of your fingers which is the internet we can always find a way to find more information and whether it is cancer or not, whatever illness it is, you can always find somebody that is probably studying or probably finding the ways that to help you have a better experience in whatever battle you are fighting. I will see you again in seven days. I want to remind you, if you know somebody that is doing something beautiful for the world, for themselves or for the environment, please let me know. My email address is conectadosbolivia24 at gmail.com. I'll have the information display on the screen and I'll be happy to receive an email from you and connect with you or with whoever you would like to recommend it to me. I will see you again in seven days. Have a great week. Goodbye.